Made in China. Those three words appear on everything from computers to toys to massive industrial parts. But behind those three words is a history of forced labor, human rights abuses, and stolen trade secrets. As democratic countries rally behind the call for freedom and holding the Chinese Communist regime accountable for its human rights atrocities, are consumers going to see less made in China products going forward? In this special report, we look at what China's 2022 economic outlook means for companies trying to do business in China. I'm, I'm just kidding. For investors weighing the risks and how the average Joe at home could be impacted without even realizing it. Welcome to China In Focus, I'm Tiffany Meyer. With a potential war brewing on the horizon, continued lockdowns, and Beijing's upcoming Winter Olympics steeped in controversy, 2022 is off to a rocky start, and it's only promising more. The world economy uh, is going to continue to suffer. But what do all these events mean for China's 2022 economic outlook? And have the impacts already rippled into global markets and influenced consumers? Anyone who's invested in Chinese tech stocks in the past year has been very disappointed. Under China's harsh pandemic measures, massive lockdowns left factories empty, supply chains stalled. At the same time, thousands of miles away in America, the pandemic led to an increase in consumer spending, most of those goods coming from China. The American consumer has been on a binge buying Chinese products. But China couldn't meet the demand. The global supply chain has shown weaknesses over the past two years. Consumers around the world met with empty shelves, unable to find what they needed, from daily necessities to face masks and ventilators. That all traces back to global manufacturing, and China is known as the world's factory. Since joining the World Trade Organization in 2001, China has exploded in influence on the global stage, snagging the title of the world's factory. 28% of global manufacturing comes out of China. That's nearly as much as America, Japan, and Germany combined. Those numbers come from accounting firm Global Upside in 2019. China has been able to do that thanks to low labor costs, low taxes, and lack of regulatory compliance, to name just a few. But the pandemic threw a wrench into that system. To combat virus spread, China took an approach known as zero-COVID policy, which meant strict lockdowns and mass testing any time so much as a single case popped up. And with workers staying at home, factories were left empty. We're still seeing significant backups in the ports of Los Angeles. I think significant delays out of China. Um, that's going to be a major issue going forward. Despite the massive lockdown sweeping across the country, China's status as the world's factory seems intact. It, it is the world's factory, and it's, it's very big. But as we head into this new year, something does seem to be changing. There is an increasing movement in the U.S. to bring production back to the U.S. or to move it out of China. Clyde Prestowitz, president of the Economic Strategy Institute, notes some might call it a division of supply lines. For instance, companies want to be able to say, if I'm selling to the American market, if I'm selling to, if I'm a computer company that might be selling computers to the U.S. government, I need to have those computers made in India. I need to have those computers made in Mexico, where which is a trusted partner of the U.S. government. But David Goldman, deputy editor at Asia Times, doesn't see that happening. Um, and as long as that occurs, if people want electronics and Tim Cook of Apple Computer says he can't build a smartphone in the United States, Americans will keep buying Chinese products despite the fact that the sentiment against, uh, against China is certainly as negative, more negative than it ever has been. But if you want a computer and it's made in China and you can't get a computer made in the United States, you'll buy a Chinese computer. But the pandemic isn't the only major issue. Another one rearing its head is politics. To watch today's full special report, click the link in the description down below. We are working with Epoch TV, and all special reports are published there in full length. 
Now we turn to today's headlines. It's a bad time for travelers headed to or from China. Beijing just suspended six more incoming flights from the U.S. on Wednesday, all of them scheduled for the coming weeks. That's as it scrambles to contain local virus outbreaks. Officials also halted another six flights from France and Canada. The cut marks the 70th such cancellation this year, and it's not over. Next on the chopping block, two United Airlines flights from San Francisco to Shanghai and four China Southern Airlines flights from Los Angeles to Guangzhou. Those suspensions are also primed to impact return flights in February. Before the latest cancellations, U.S. and Chinese carriers were operating about 20 flights a week. Still, that's well below their more than 100 per week average from before the pandemic. And U.S. carriers are concerned. They say they are currently talking with authorities from both countries, looking to minimize impact for travelers. The U.S. Transportation Department did not immediately comment on the matter. China in particular seems to be sealing off its borders to travelers. According to Chinese aviation regulators, the country is cutting total international flights down to just 200 a week, or 2 percent of pre-pandemic levels. And in Hong Kong, a major transport hub, officials announced a two-week ban last week, targeting incoming flights from eight countries, including Britain and the United States. Travelers, including overseas Chinese people trying to get home, have had to scramble for expensive tickets, with only a handful available. One Chinese netizen described his frustration on social media, writing, Now going back to China is like mission impossible. For Dutch athletes traveling to Beijing next month for the Winter Olympics, they may have to leave their phones and laptops at home. That's according to a Dutch newspaper report from Tuesday. Citing insiders, the paper says Dutch athletes were warned to keep personal devices out of China to avoid Chinese espionage. The urgent advice was given to athletes as part of a set of measures proposed by the Dutch Olympic Committee. Its spokesperson explained that a risk assessment on the upcoming Beijing trip included cybersecurity concerns. But given China's highly censored internet and surveillance tactics, unique action is needed. Dutch team members will be equipped with unused devices while inside China to protect their personal data from Chinese surveillance. At least 30 Dutch athletes are set to compete in next month's Beijing Olympics, mainly in the speed and short track skating events. Sweden won't send any officials to the Beijing Winter Olympics, but it's not from the international calls to boycott. On Tuesday, the country's sports minister told a local news outlet that the decision was made due to strict pandemic restrictions in China. He added that this is not a diplomatic boycott. The games are scheduled to take place next month, but few world leaders are expected to attend. That's because many foreign nations have diplomatically boycotted the event. That is, sending athletes to compete, but no official representatives to protest against human rights issues in China. Troubles are brewing for yet another Chinese real estate company. Developer RNF Properties is unable to pay off a $725 million bond payment due Thursday. But the company has so far avoided default because bondholders have agreed to give the Chinese firm an extension on the payment. This happened after the company paid over $100 million for a tender offer and fees to bondholders. But over $600 million are still outstanding. The extension lasts six months from Thursday, but this isn't the only payment the developer owes. The debt-laden RNF has close to $2 billion in bonds due by October this year. According to the developer, in 2021, it had contracted sales amounting to nearly $20 billion. RNF is one of the largest real estate companies in southern China's Guangzhou city. Next, we'd like to address some viewer feedback we received regarding the term Greater China. We quote the term as part of yesterday's episode from a statement published by a car manufacturer. It was used to describe the company's performance in mainland China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Macau. In the business world, these four locations are referred to as Greater China. Here at China in Focus, we recognized a number of key differences that separate them, especially mainland China and Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party has never ruled Taiwan, despite its threats to invade. Mainland China operates under a one-party system and totalitarian regime, while Taiwan enjoys its own democratically elected president and constitution. 
What's more, the island's leaders widely respect human rights and freedoms. And that's all for today's China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.